I'm Miss Annie from Asylum Hill Boys and Girls Club, and I'm here to offer you five simple steps to a better apology. Learning how to apologize well is one of the most important parts of growing up. Being able to see how your actions make other people feel and take responsibility for what you do is how you grow into the kind and thoughtful grown-up you want to be. But it can be really hard to apologize. It's not fun to admit you've made a mistake. I know a lot of grown-up people who still have a hard time apologizing. That's why I've put together these simple steps for when you're struggling with apologizing. Step number one, put yourself on pause. One of the most important steps in learning how to apologize is figuring out when to apologize. Sometimes an adult in your life will ask you to apologize to a classmate, a friend, or a family member. But other times you can figure out that you've made a mistake by the emotions on a friend's face. Does someone look angry or sad? Whether you figured it out by yourself or an adult asked you to, when you know you might need to apologize, you should put yourself on pause. Oftentimes mistakes happen when we're experiencing a big emotion, and sometimes we need to sort out our own feelings before we talk about somebody else's. Which leads us to step number two, cool down. Sometimes we're really angry and we say something hurtful. Sometimes we're sad and we let someone down. Sometimes we can be so happy and excited that we're not paying attention to what our bodies are doing and cause a spill or an accident. Emotions are great, especially when they're big ones. They teach us about what we care about. But when we need to apologize for something we've done because of a big emotion, you want to cool down before you try to talk about it. Ask the grown-ups you're with if you can spend a few minutes alone, maybe at a desk with your head down. Or maybe try walking around the room you're in. Take deep breaths until you feel calm and ready to talk. It's important to let the person you're apologizing to get a moment to calm down too. Step number three, put yourself in their shoes. Once you've calmed down, think about how you might have made the person you're apologizing to feel. Has someone ever made you feel that way? Do you understand why they might be upset? Some people call this walking in someone else's shoes. Sometimes it's hard to figure out why someone is upset and you might have to ask them. Step number four, do over. Once you've learned how you made someone feel, you can think about how you would do the situation over. Fill in this sentence. If I could do it again, I would instead. When we apologize well, we're not just saying sorry for what happened. We're making a promise to learn from the mistake we've made. Everybody makes mistakes. It's part of being human but we can also use mistakes to learn how to change our behavior for the future. Sometimes you'll make the same mistakes many times because some lessons are just hard to learn. But if you take a moment to think about what you wish you would have done differently each time, you'll figure out how to make new choices. Step number five, I'm sorry. There are a lot of different ways to actually say the apology, but here's a layout I like. Think about all the steps we've done before and fill in these blanks. I'm sorry that I, remember what you learned when you put yourself in their shoes. What did you do that hurt the other person? I'm sorry that I, I was feeling, what emotions did you cool down from? Telling the other person how you felt is important to explain where you're coming from and why you made the mistake that you did. Next time, what would you do if you could do it all over again? Telling someone what you would do next time is really important to showing that you're actually sorry for what you did and you weren't just forced to say sorry because a grown-up told you to. If you follow these tips, you can help make another person feel better and do a little growing for yourself. Stay safe and stay connected. Bye, guys.